Okay, so I thought I'd just share um, this technique with you. I'm preparing um, this fiberglass uh, seat cowl. Uh, this is for an R6 track bike that we're putting together. And uh, the bodywork is pretty badly damaged. It's typical race uh, <clears throat> bodywork, very thin gel coat. Um, and this has been um, I would it's where, where it's been mounted here basically it's been pulled down and all the gel coat is cracked um, and you can see here I put a photograph of before I sanded it as well uh, but you can see all the the cracking the crazing in the gel coat where you know it's either been um, bolted down too tight to the bodywork and it's it's stressed it um, or it's it's probably been in some accidents in its time um, so what I want to show you is a technique which I, I kind of touched on in one of my uh, previous videos I think on the VF 1000 R but here I'm going to do it on a larger scale um, I will you can see here uh, there's the mounting hole I think there must have been, I don't know, maybe two other mounting holes here. I don't know the history of this part. They've been filled. And this is quite thin now. The um, fiberglass matting has been sanded back a couple of times. So I will, on the inside, I'm going to lay new fiberglass down, fiberglass matting, and fiberglass that all in. <clears throat> but this will have to be all cleaned out to be able to get that to bond properly. And that'll give it more rigidity and the strength inside but on the outside here you just can't do that now, you know if I mix up some fiberglass resin um, and try to lay that in and, and fix all these cracks and crazings it, the fiberglass resin is not is just not going to wick into these cracks it'll lay on the top and then eventually it'll it'll either peel off because this there's a lot of paint on here um, and I can't sand out these cracks because the gel coat is very thin. And if I go any deeper than I have already, I risk just going straight through the gel coat into the matting. And then it's not worth trying to recover the part. But anyway, here's the technique I'll use. I've used this before. Like I said, I, I used it on a, some small <coughs> repairs on the VF1000R. And basically, I take um, a very thin... Uh, industrial strength cyanoacrylate or super glue this is a special industrial strength one uh, and the thing with this is it's very thin so when I lay it down on the part it's gonna wick into all of these uh, cracks <coughs> in the gel coat <coughs> and the idea is I'm gonna apply this across the whole surface and I'm gonna use um, a blue paper just a standard paper shop towel um, <clears throat> but generally any kind of paper towel will work and I'm going to wipe the super glue the cyanoacrylate into the all the cracks and I'm just going to keep applying layers until I feel like I've got a good penetration into the gel coat um, and the reason we use the paper towel is that kicks off the cyanoacrylate so as I'm wiping this in it's also the the dust particles from the paper are kicking off the cyanoacrylate and actually they add strength to it just like adding um, powdered plastic or anything like that when you're using this technique to fill gaps so anyway let's let's go uh, with it and so I just liberally pour it on don't worry about uh, having it perfect all we're doing right now, and you can see here, try to get it into all the cracks, like so. I'm just going to work my way down anywhere where there's a particular so I'm just <clears throat> wiping that in, trying to take off as much of the excess as possible. As I say, we'll, we'll still have to reinforce this at the back. I wouldn't just rely on this. But what this does is it just allows you to save the gel coat, basically. And uh, then when we paint it, when we've done all the final prep, hopefully none of these 
uh, cracks are going to um, show back through in the final paint scheme. It's you know it's it's race body work. It's not going to be perfect, and there's always the chance um, that you know some of these will sh will come back through. There's a lot on this part, so it's I'm not. I'm not saying it's uh, going to be 100% fixed, but I have used this in the past and it works really well. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just keep uh, <coughs> doing that until probably I've got four, five, six layers on there. And you can actually feel the heat that's, that's coming off that as the uh, cyanoacrylate is kicking off when it comes in contact with the, with the part. Okay, and then in the final stage of this process, um, what I'm going to do we, is again apply the. I'm just going to let this tack off a little bit, um, and then I'm going to apply another couple of layers of cyanoacrylate. But this time, as I lay that in, uh, I'm going to use some 80 grit uh, sandpaper, dry. And I'm going to sand as the uh, cyanoacrylate is kind of just starting to kick off. I'm going to sand the whole surface. What that's going to do is mix all the dust that I create from sanding the paint and, and some of the gel coat where it's exposed. That's going to create a fine dust. And that'll mix with the cyanoacrylate and fill in um, all of the spider cracks. So we've already put in the cyanoacrylate on its own, let that penetrate deep into the cracks and into the into the gel coat. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to basically add in the powder from the sanding, which will do a final filling um, job on the actual cracks themselves and add quite a bit more strength because that'll get pushed into all the cracks and add some additional strength. Again, it's just the same really as adding... Um, um, one of the techniques is like adding uh, talcum powder or baking powder to super glue or cyanoacrylate to fill um, gaps. This is exactly the same thing, but I'm just using the dust that I create from sanding the part to bond with the cyanoacrylate. So I can show you that now. We've got some pretty big cracks here. So what I'm going to do, use the paper towel again. I'm just going to lay that in like so. And a, but quickly just do that and then I'm sanding the part. I'm using a rough sandpaper because I want to create a lot of dust very quickly and get that mixed with the cyanoacrylate before it actually fully kicks off. And you can see there actually what happens. That's the cyanoacrylate there starting to kick off already with the dust that I'm creating from here. And I'm just gonna you. It's, it, it's just feel. You get a you get a feel for when to start sanding because you don't want to sand too early um, or too late. If you if you let it uh, set too too hard uh, before you start sanding, you're not you're not gonna get the dust that you're creating bonding with the cyanoacrylate. So, I don't know how easy that is to see on the camera, but you can see that's now um, all smoothed out. I can't feel any of those, even here where there was major cracking, I can't feel, I can, you know, only I can feel because I've gone over with 80 grit. Uh, obviously I can feel those scratches, but I can't feel any of these cracks now that were in the gel coat. And then the paint, and that's that's pretty strong. 
I mean, obviously, you know, if you if you put a huge amount of force on this again, you're going to be able to crack it again. <coughs> but in general, that'll uh, that'll stand up to quite a bit of abuse now. So, yeah, that's the technique, and I'll apply that to. Pretty much going to have to apply it to all of this, most of this part, as you can see here. It's got a lot of cracking, but uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, and it's. It saves the part, um, you know, allows us to use it for another season or two. Um, so then I'll finish, once you've kind of done that with the rough 80 grit, just to get uh, as much material into the cracks as possible. Then obviously I'll go over it probably with a 220 and start to smooth it out. Um, and then we'll go 400 primer it um, and then yeah go through the go through the usual paint process yep so that's yeah that's kind of my technique for doing these kind of repairs